In this Capture to Print workflow, uh, I'm going to make a panorama by merging four images in Lightroom. And we're going to do that by using the photo merge function in Lightroom, which is basically stitching images. And I'm using these four images here that I recently captured in Death Valley National Park. And the key to merging images or creating a panorama is make sure that your horizon stays level and in the same place. And the second part is to make sure that your camera settings don't change. So in this example, I probably used this first image here to get my exposure settings because it's the brightest uh, image because it's facing towards the sun. The sun is rising uh, to the right or to the east. And so I know that that's going to be the brightest uh, part of the image, especially the sky up here. And once I locked the exposure settings down by using manual mode in my camera, uh, then I don't have to worry about exposure changing as I pan uh, and take each image. Uh, to do this, I used a tripod, but I didn't use any special equipment uh, in terms of creating a panorama. I just simply uh, made sure that I was nice and solid. And then as I panned the camera towards the left, kept the horizon level and overlapped each image by about 30% so that Lightroom has enough information across images to create a seamless uh, panorama. So to start, I'll select all four images, right click and select photo merge, panorama. Typically I use uh, or select spherical for the projection type. I leave auto crop on, or you can always uncrop the image later. And uh, that's about it. We'll click on merge. And we have our panorama. And so you see Lightroom does a really great job of uh, stitching the image or merging the image. I don't see uh, anything that's disjointed or, or needs to be corrected. If I press R, you can see the crop and how Lightroom is cropping it to give us the largest image possible. And uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. So visually and compositionally with this image, uh, what I want to do is darken it a lot more. It needs to be uh, darker. The shadows need to be a lot richer. Uh, I want the shadows to project the light and give us a feel for what the desert feels like as it transitions from darkness to light or how the light sort of paints the landscape as it rises on the horizon. You can also see here that my exposure uh, is pushed to the right as far as possible before clipping the highlights. And the reason I did that is because I knew that I was going to want as much shadow separation and detail as possible. The, the scene looked dark to me at the time. It wasn't uh, this bright at all. It was a lot darker, a lot richer. And in order to make uh, those shadows come across in a print as well as possible, I need as much fidelity in the file. And so by exposing to the right, my shadows, my darker areas are here versus being way over to the left, uh, which is not as good in terms of quality and also a lot noisier. So exposing to the right here, I think, helps me uh, to produce a better print. Now to start, I want to darken the image so that it starts to feel more like what I'm thinking in my mind. Right now, it looks way too bright and washed out. So I'm going to start by lowering the exposure about there. And that's much closer to uh, what I saw and what I'm thinking and what I want to convey. I'm going to hold down the Option key and adjust my whites. Those little clouds on the right-hand side are clipping, but I'm going to have to reduce those with a local adjustment. So I'm going to stop there. Hold on Option again and pull down on the blacks. Let go of the Option key, and those are those bushes there. So I think I'm okay with that for now. These are silhouettes. This is the area that is most important. And the reason for that is you can see now that this is, uh, big shape here in the center balances out the strong light on the left and right side of the image. Uh, it's a difficult image in terms of the composition because I have bright light right on the edge. And the only way to really manage that so that your eye doesn't uh, go out of the image but actually stays in the picture is with this big shape here and the pattern and repetition here that I, I, I hope I can create uh, to make the center stronger than the sides. I'm going to pull down on highlights a little bit. open up a little bit of the shadows, which gives us more shadow separation. There. Let's add some clarity, mid-tone contrast. 
I'm going to add quite a bit of vibrance here. And I'll even add some saturation as well. Okay, that's looking a lot better, a lot closer to what I'm thinking. Let's look at before using the backslash key and after. I'm going to add some contrast as well. I don't want to use the contrast adjustment here in the basic panel. I'm going to use the tone curve here, which gives me a little bit more control if I need to adjust uh, the shadows separately from the highlights. And I think I'm going to go with the strongest contrast curve here as a preset. Okay, that's a lot better. You, you see, uh, the vision that I'm thinking of is this area here has to be strong enough to balance out the left and right edges of the frame. Okay, I'm also going to go into the HSL controls here and using the luminance uh, area, going to lower the blues a little bit to see if that helps me with the sky. And yes, I like that just a little. Let's go into the detail panel and add some sharpening. Sharpening should be done at one to one. Uh, zoomed in at one to one in Lightroom so you can really see the uh, changes. And of course you find that here in the navigator uh, up here, you can see the ratio that you're zoomed into. One to one is uh, the, the best uh, ratio for sharpening. I'm going to raise the sharpening amount. I'm going to use a lower radius than a higher radius. Uh, remember that radius sets uh, the space between edges that Lightroom will detect and sharpen. And so the lower the radius, the closer those edges are. And in this image, we generally want to find edges that are close to each other uh, to give us a lot of the fine detail on the sand here uh, and these areas back here. When we use a low radius, we can use the detail slider to enhance the sharpening on those edges. And then to apply masking, I'm going to zoom out hold down option, click and drag on the masking slider. And this does a really, really nice job of masking off areas that don't need sharpening. And I like to call this aesthetic sharpening, which means that the image has more depth, more dimension. It looks more organic because we're not sharpening all areas. And so the image and the print will, will have more space between areas that are sharper and smoother because of course our eye detects areas that are sharper and smoother and that separates them and helps to uh, give a little more space to them. I'm going to add some noise reduction. Uh, you can see that there's a little bit of noise here, but not too much. So raising the luminance noise reduction to about 30 and maybe the color noise reduction to 30 as well. Okay, let's look at before and after. Okay, let's uh, work on the sky. I'm going to select a graduated filter and pull that down around here. And because the light is coming up on the right hand side of the image, I'm just tilting the filter a little bit towards the right to compensate for that. And on this, I think we can, uh, well, exposure is already set at minus 0 0.30, so that's fine. We'll pull down on highlights as well. And that does a pretty nice job. Now, I like what it's done over here, uh, but it's a little uneven going towards this side. So I'm going to create another filter and drag that down around here. And maybe a little bit higher. And I'm going to, don't want exposure here, just highlights. We'll pull down on the highlights to make that nice and smooth. And I think now we've got a much more even sky than we had before, but still with some tonal variation so that we can see that the that light is changing and getting brighter on this side. Then I'm going to uh, select a an adjustment brush. And I think I just wanna darken a few areas uh, to create a little bit more dimension to the, to the image and the print. I'm going to use the burn or darken preset. And first, maybe just to darken this edge here just a bit that helps the eye to feel as though it wants to move in towards a brighter area versus wanting to exit the image. And same thing over here, maybe just to darken that a bit like that. I also want to emphasize this edge here. There we go, like that. And I'm going to hold down the option key 
so that I have an erase brush now and just smooth this out a little bit. There we go. Maybe a little bit more, raise the flow. Okay, a little bit higher to maintain this edge. And then maybe a little bit here as well. Just to, again, create this sense of movement and tonal uh, change here. Now, the other thing that I'm noticing as I look at the image is that I think maybe this filter darkened some of these mountains a little bit too much. So I'm going to return to the graduated filter, uh, this one here, and we can modify this filter using uh, the brush. So I'm going to select the brush here and hold down option to erase and maybe erase from this area here, raise the flow a little bit. And maybe from this area here as well. Make the brush a little bigger. Maybe a bit too much. So I'm going to come back to that graduated filter, select it again, and then applying uh, the brush and, and drop the flow quite a bit, 25 or 26, just to make this very gradual and less noticeable. There we go. That's more like it. So looking at before and looking at after, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I think I'm ready to try a print. So I'm going to hit S for soft proof, Y for compare. And I think the paper here needs to be a paper that has high density. Um, I think you can see already that I, I need a paper that will hold as much shadow detail and separation here because that's what gives this area of the image interest uh, and allows it to have some dimension and balance out the left and right edges. If I use a matte paper, I think the print just won't be as interesting, especially, again, in this big dominant area here. So I'm going to use a high density paper uh, and I like platine fiber rag for an image like this because uh, not only does it hold shadow uh, detail really well, hold, holds lots of blacks, but it also has that beautiful uh, texture, that grain on the surface that I think will complement uh, the image and give us again a lot of dimension uh, across the entire image. So coming up here, I'm going to change this from uh, a rag paper, which is why you see a big difference here from the way it looks to the original. And I'll print this on my Canon Pro 1000 and select Platine. And then I'll toggle between the two rendering intents, perceptual or relative. And it looks like perceptual is just a bit closer. Again, when in doubt, most paper manufacturers recommend using perceptual. So I'm ready to make a print. I will click on print to enter the print module. And for this image, because it's a panorama, I'm going to use the largest paper size possible uh, in cut sheets, which is an A2 size or 17 by 22. So I'll go down to page setup, select the printer, Pro 1000, and paper size is going to be ANSI C. Uh, I know that's kind of odd, but if we select A2, uh, A2 is not exactly 17 by 22. It's a European size, and it's actually 16.5 by 23.39. Uh, but because my paper is US paper, I have to select ANSI C. Now, you'll, you'll see down here 17 by 22, and this, these are custom sizes that I've added. But if you haven't added these custom sizes, then you won't have them here. But if you select ANSI C, when I scroll over to that, you'll see that it then tells us 17 by 22 as the paper size. Horizontal is going to be my format. I'll click on print settings, set up the printer driver. Once again, Pro 1000, jump down here to layout, then to quality and media. Media type is photo paper Pro Luster. Now, how do we know that? 
if we check the Canton uh, website, select the printer, select the model Pro 1000, and you'll see here that for platine fiber rag, the media setting that we should use is Photo Paper Pro Luster. So back to Lightroom, we'll select that. Paper source can be either manual feed or rear tray. I like the manual feed because it's a little easier with the Pro 1000. And print quality is going to be highest. This is our quality setting for the printer. And I'll click on save. Now I'll set my margins, uh, one inch for left, one inch for right. Hit enter. Top and bottom should be minimal so that it centers the image, although we'll probably have to cut the paper anyhow. And then make sure to maximize the cell size once again, because you can see here that even with my minimal margins, uh, the image isn't as large as it should be, and that's because the cell size also has to be maximized to the size of the margins. Now we set our resolution, so I will scroll down to the print job area. I'm going to uncheck print resolution, and then we'll look at what our image native resolution is, which is 459 PPI. And because we're above the printer resolution, the printer's native resolution, which is 300, we can double that and print it at 600. So back here in print resolution, I'll check this box telling Lightroom to interpolate the image, enter 600. We'll use print sharpening standard and media type is going to be glossy for platine. 16-bit output checked, of course, and then we have to select our paper profile. Same one that we selected in soft proofing, that'll be CIFA Pro 1000, platine, and perceptual was the rendering intent uh, that uh, we determined was best in soft proofing. And we can go ahead and make a print. So here's our print. And you can see, I think Platine does a really nice job uh, with holding all of these deep shadows here. And that's because Platine has a really good DMAX, high density paper, gives us a lot of shadow separation. And I think that's important for this shape here, which kind of holds the image together. It glues the left and right hand sides, which have all the light. Uh, and so I think that helps to really preserve the subtlety in the shadows. It also maintains the rich color of the highlights here. And you can see when I zoom in here, uh, the very slight texture of platine, it's like, a, it's like grain, if you will. But I think it adds a nice uh, depth to the image. It gives it a nice dimension, especially for uh, an image like this that has lots of texture in it already. So platine, I think, is, does a nice job with this print. And the paper's characteristics, I think, complement uh, what I'm trying to convey with the image, uh, this dramatic shift between darkness and brightness, uh, the light sweeping across the desert, painting uh, parts of the desert, if you will, with this beautiful orange color. Uh, and uh, so I think uh, it works quite well.